Hey everyone, Cleo here and we just passed the midway point of the month so time for me to give you a midway check-in. So for those of you who don't regularly follow my channel in 2022 I am reading my books backwards basically meaning I'm going to be reading my physical TBR from the longest book down to the shortest book with some notable exceptions. In the month of January that means that so far I've been able to read the two longest books on my TBR. I will explain the in a second. <laughs> So the first book that I picked up was The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. This is a book that has been on my TBR for quite a while. I had at some point picked up quite a few Charles Dickens. It was my goal to read every Dickens out there. It is still to some extent, but I don't care about that goal all that much anymore because I do start to feel kind of in a rut with Charles Dickens from time to time. And so it's definitely not a goal that I care deeply about anymore. I have read quite a few of his works at this point. I think at this point it's probably like seven or eight books, so I might as well continue. But it's definitely not something that I feel passionate about or anything like that. Now, The Pickwick Papers is his first published work, and originally this was published in installments in newspapers. That's more or less the case with most of his works. Dickens was somebody who was paid by the word. And as a consequence, a lot of times his books end up being quite chunky and unnecessarily chunky. My One of my favorites by Charles Dickens is A Christmas Carol, which is just a short story or a novella. Another one that I really quite enjoyed upon reread was Hard Times, which is also because it is shorter and it has it gets to the point more quickly, which is definitely not the case for the Pickwick Papers. And in the Pickwick Papers, actually, there doesn't seem to be much of an overarching plot. So we are following these, mainly these three people who are part of a sort of a gentleman club called Pickwick Papers, and we see them through different adventures. And so it's very episodic in nature, and there isn't really an overarching storyline. So it's very much to be read as a sort of like comedy TV show almost. You know, you have these different comedic scenes, and you know, best to be enjoyed separately, I guess, which is not how I was trying to read this. I was going through this in one go. And so if you are somebody who does like that type of literature, then I think when you take your time with this, you might really enjoy it. But for me personally, I don't like episodic stuff in general. I don't, for example, watch a lot of TV that is very episodic in nature. There always needs to be an overarching plot. And the more overarching plot that there is to a TV show, the more likely I am to be interested. And when it comes to comedy, that's in general already something that I'm less inclined to consume. I'm much more inclined to look at sort of like a drama show or a fantasy show or a fantasy show or something like that. So I quite enjoyed the scenes that I was reading, but at the same time I was more or less indifferent to them and I did not feel the need to continue. I asked a friend of mine who had read this and who had kind of already indicated from the beginning when I said that I was going to read this, like, um, good luck. I asked her whether there was an overarching plot that would enter at some point and she said no, so I decided let's put it down. Uh, this is not the Charles Dickens for me. This is not going to be the book that's going to break my Charles Dickens rut. The second longest book on my TBR is Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee, but since Jade Legacy is the third book in the series and I haven't started the series yet, I replaced it with the first one in the series, which is Jade City. So Jade City is the first book in the Greenbone saga, which is sort of like mafia-esque, Asian-inspired fantasy. So the story is set in the city of Jan Lun, which is a city very much famous for its jade trade. And basically within the city there are two big clans. There are a few minor clans, but there are two big clans that are involved in the jade trade. And there is very much a sort of like rivalry between these two. They used to be closely allied, they used to be on the same side, they were working together during a big war. But when the war was over and, and there was no common enemy anymore to fight, they started to fight amongst themselves and, the clan, and broke up into separate clans. So we're following characters from one of these clans, from the Nopi clan, and we're watching them as they maneuver this landscape, as they deal with the scheming from the opposing clan. Now, I had high, high hopes for this one. I really thought it was going to be a five-star read. I love Asian fantasy to begin with, and I did definitely find myself intrigued with the idea of a mafia-type story. But part of the problem when it comes to my enjoyment of this one is that I was expecting us to follow people from both sides of the clans, 
And in the end, I still liked that idea more than I liked the execution of this one. I thought it was a great book. I gave it a four star rating. I would highly encourage you to read it. I definitely enjoyed it a lot and I definitely am intrigued about where the story is going to go from now. And I'm still hoping that the next one or the one after that will give me that five star reading experience. But for me, I still was missing something. And I cannot really fully pinpoint what I was missing. One of the things that I was missing was the nuance of following people from different sides because we're only following people on the sides of the no peak clan and so we have this easy divide between the good guys and the bad guys because we are only following people from one perspective and so we don't really have a defense of the other clan we don't really have a perspective that can make us feel connected to that other side of the conflict and so I would have preferred that. I always like a whole lot of nuance in my fantasy. And so I was missing that a little bit. And if we're not going to be following characters from different sides of the clan, I would have enjoyed a little bit more of inner conflict within the no Peak clan. There is definitely some there, but I still felt like it was kind of mellow. So for me, I'm very much looking forward to continuing on. As I said, I really enjoyed this book. I really enjoyed a lot of it thematic. I loved uh, the characters that we were introduced to. I'm very much intrigued about one in particular, for example. So I do want to know where we're going, but I hope it's going to go a little bit darker, a little bit more brutal. The third book that I finished so far this year is Every Harder Doorway by Shauna McGuire. This is not on my physical TBR. Basically, I'm reading all of these books for a readathon, which is Be sure -thon, hosted by Sasha from the channel The Wild Sasha. This is a readathon all about the way we're children series by Shauna McGuire, and so it felt very fitting to put every harder doorway in there, especially since I didn't have a portal fantasy on my TBR anymore. So in order to fit the portal fantasy prompt, I decided to read Every Harder Doorway. It's also been a series that I've been intrigued about for years. So in the Way We're Children series, we are following children who at some point in time have entered a magic door that was intended specifically for them. Entering this door transports them to a world that perfectly fits their personality. So within that world, they feel perfectly at home. And so when they return home, it can be very difficult for them to adjust because they have spent who knows how much time in a world that was perfectly adapted to them. And now they have to navigate this imperfect world again. And it's for those children that Eleanor West has opened up her home to help them navigate this transition. And so I'm guessing in each book we will follow different characters as they go through life past this experience and as they relive past experiences. And I am definitely still going to try at least the next book within the series, but Every Harder Doorway, unfortunately to me, it was okay, it was good, but it didn't fully deliver, you know, I didn't get enough out of it. So I do still want to try the second book because of the fact that all of these books will be following different characters and will be discussing different types of worlds. There's a very big possibility for the first book that you read not really being your favorite because you don't really like the character that you're following all that much or because you don't really care all that much about the world. You don't really relate all that much to that character as you might to certain others. And so I do definitely still want to try out the second one and see if I have a similar experience there or whether I like it more. But with Every Harder Doorway in particular, I just, I just didn't really care all that much, you know. And I had expected to care. I had expected to really like it because I do think that the concept sounds very intriguing. But I guess I wanted more of what had taken place in the past world, what had taken place in that parallel world. And we didn't get a whole lot of that. It was very much centered around the period after. It was very much centered around the character navigate. I've, I've really, I've forgotten the name of the protagonist, which is why I keep referring to her as the character. But she had, was she, wait, Nancy? It was something like that. I'm going to call her Nancy and I hope that that's going to be the and, and I hope that that's her real name. But so it was mainly focused on Nancy's time arriving in the boarding school, getting to know people around her, the way that she felt estranged from the people around her, getting to know them. And there was a sort of murder mystery involved. And I don't like murder mystery, so I don't care about that type of storyline either. But so I would have loved more of exploration of what had happened in the parallel world that she had been in. And I didn't feel like we had enough of that because that turned out to be what I was more interested in. 
So we'll see what ends up happening after book two. These are very short books. They're kind of like novellas. So you do definitely fly through them. It's not a big chore to read one more to figure out if this is for me or not. But so that's what I've read so far this month. So so far three out of the five that were on my TBR. So it's looking very doable for the second half of the month. I am at this point not that far into Beijing Coma. So this is the next book on my TBR. I am making my way through this one super slowly, so I might have to speed up at some point. But for the time being, I'm still very much fine with just going through it very slowly because it is quite a complex story. And so I do definitely need more brain power, more focusing power to process what I'm reading. And as a result, I'm not reading as much a day in this one. But so probably if I get further into it, I might at some point start speeding up naturally. And then the other book that I'm currently reading is The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. I'm 150 pages into it. It is about 560, I think. I don't foresee any problems in finishing this one. I'm very much enjoying my reread of this one. And I've gotten into the habit of listening to the audiobook again, but I'm going to try and make it a habit to listen to the audiobook while reading physically, because that was my plan. I was not going to listen to fantasy audibly as much anymore in 2022 because I find that I'm less capable of focusing on fantasy than I am on other genres. This is a reread, of course, so it's not like I'm missing things, but there are certain things that I felt like I missed the first time around, and so I want to make sure that I fully understand these this time around. And so I preferably will be reading it physically so that I fully get all of that detail um, ingrained in my mind. But so those are the two remaining books on my TBR for this month. I don't foresee a problem in finishing them. Beijing Coma, maybe if I don't speed up my reading for it at some point in time, but we'll see. Uh, if need be, that one moves into next month, because so far at least, I am definitely enjoying that one, and I find that one to be super fascinating. It's just that it's taking me quite some time. But so yeah, that's my progress for the month so far. Definitely let me know how you've been doing. Did you get a great start to the new year or are you taking things slow as I am at this point in time? So hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you guys for the next one. Bye. <laughs>